The Targaryens used dragonglass to decorate the weapons, without even knowing what the first men used it for. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. Maisie Williams has been doing a whole bunch of interviews for a movie that she's releasing with Tom Hiddleston and a bunch of other people called Early Man. Naturally, people are asking her questions about Game of Thrones. She talked a lot about the special combat training that she's going to be doing. So when we saw her obtain the Valyrian Dagger during Season 7, we had an idea for the larger importance that it might play during Season 8. But now we have a much better picture. So let's break this down. And if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll be doing season eight till it drops. Obviously, there's a lot of book releases coming up. I am still doing a weekly giveaway for the DVDs that I'll explain at the end of the video. So she recently said that she's currently on her way to a night shoot, which is week four of 12 weeks of night shoots. Like she's going back and forth. Like all the actors are very busy. So not all of them are on set for the entire duration of the shoot. Some of them come and go as they need to. But as you can tell, most of the stuff that they're shooting is the big night battles, like the really big battles against the Night King. Then eventually, whatever the final battle is going to be in episode 5. But she goes on to say that it's just huge, the task is huge, but there's no better way to leave the show, to be honest. So it makes it sound like this is going to be most of what her character is going to do during season 8. Now that doesn't mean that that's the only thing that she's going to film. Like she's not going to come back after that. There's lots of actors that have come and gone that might just come back for minor scenes at the very end. Because Arya is not super high on my list of death predictions. But she just said, yesterday I took a stunt class for the new season. It's sword work, combat fighting. The trainers have these big pads on so you're allowed to just go crazy meaning that she will be unleashed during that third battle of Winterfell at some point. Now examining her role, you have Battle of Blackwater is a good analog for what's happening. You have Stannis with this massive force rolling in the Blackwater up against an undermanned castle. So it's a similar situation with Winterfell. Just imagine Stannis' forces at Blackwater times 10, like enough to literally encircle all of Winterfell if he wanted to, although I don't think it's necessarily going to go down that way. But there were just a couple key moments during Season 7 that let you know what the key to defeating the Night King and his army are. So there are currently four White Walkers that we see here. And Beric Dondarrion says, we don't need to kill all these Whites. We just need to kill him, the one that created all of them. Killed him. He turned them all. The thing about that though is that he is incredibly powerful and even though they've sort of brushed over a lot of Arya's training as a faceless person, they've given her some pretty unbelievable skills. But for all the logic that they bend, I think it's a little unbelievable to expect that Arya will be able to immediately take down the Night King, especially assuming that he's going to stay on Viserion's back. So it's just not going to be an easy target. But the next best thing, and this is where Arya really comes in handy, is, is in taking out these four White Walkers because they themselves raise squadrons of Whites. So you can't destroy an entire army just by destroying these four. But Arya is an assassin. This fight proves that she's amazing in close combat. And yes, she could probably rush the field with all the rank and file infantry and dodge a lot of Whites and White Walkers. She could probably survive something like that. But the faster way to take down the army would be to send her specifically after these four White Walker generals. The real hard part is getting her to those targets. And for everyone that's asked whether or not she could actually wear the face of a White Walker, I don't think that that's possible. That just seems a little too ridiculous. Of all the things that the TV show has changed, you just have to draw the line at a certain point. But one of the important things about them filming a lot of these battles at night is that it's much easier for them to get away with a lot of the CG that they need to do, which is where we get into direwolf territory. The one thing that the show has never done really, really well, portray direwolves on the show. Like even during season seven, there are very few scenes where Arya Stark is in the same frame right up close with Nymeria. Like they film it from different angles. They try to cut it really quickly. It's just harder for them to do during broad daylight. So at night, it's just much easier to do a really cool version of that. 
So Nymeria and the Super PAC are key towards clearing paths to these White Walker generals for Arya for her to get in close. Because that's all you need to do. Just get her up real close. And if she can do this with Brienne, she could probably do this with most of those generals. Now, obviously, I don't think they want to make it too easy, but that's just the simplest way to accomplish what they need to do. The real problem, though, is, is that after you take the first couple out, they figure out what you're trying to do and change their tactics. So for taking this line of thought, you have to assume that by the time they get to the last White Walker general, most of the super pack is dead. Most of them are just regular wolves. Nymeria is the only dire wolf in that pack. The reason why it's called a super pack is because she's like the uber alpha because she's so powerful and big. But for those of you asking about whether or not Arya's dagger is key for killing the Night King, yes, I do think that it's extra special because it pops up in Samwell's book, Rhaegar had a fondness for the prophecy. He was one of the few people in the kingdom with the power to buy something like that. The books in the TV show never fully explain where Littlefinger got the dagger from. There are a lot of theories about that, but he helped precipitate the War of the Five Kings by purposefully losing the dagger to Robert Baratheon, thereby allowing it to fall into possession of Joffrey, who gave it to the cat's paw, and so on and so forth. The importance of the dagger on the TV show is mostly relative to Bran Stark and those things that happened during season one. But taking it back further than that, if it appears in Samwell's book, that means that it's ancient. The ancient items on the show usually have special significance, like Longclaw or Heart Eater, Joffrey's sword that's now in Jamie's possession, or Heartsbane that's in Samwell's possession. So what you'll probably see, like Arya Stark wielding the dagger, is the people that have Valyrian swords that aren't fighters will give those swords to people that are so that they can help take out these White Walker generals. Because there's a lot of obsidian, you can give that to all sorts of common infantrymen. The Valyrian weapons seem like they're destined for more greater kills, which just leads me to believe that they'll be used on the White Walker generals. But let me know in the comments, Arya Stark filming most of her scenes during these night battles do you think that she's going to be the one to kill all of these White Walker generals? Or do you think that they're going to let some of the other characters wielding Valyrian swords to take them down? Like Jon Snow or Jaime Lannister. Jaime Lannister himself seems like he's more of a general type figure. So I'd be surprised if he spends a lot of time charging the field. You dumb fool. Remember him charging Drogon. There'll probably be some similar moment during season 8, but it'll be Brienne yelling at him, not Tyrion. Circling back around to the dagger, there are a lot of theories about its prehistory on the TV show. A lot of people think that Rhaegar may have reforged it from Dark Sister. I think the fact that it appears in Samuel's book implies that it's much older than that. So I think that if Rhaegar possessed this dagger at one point, he just bought the dagger rather than having it forged brand new. Just remember there was a giant ruby embedded in it and Rhaegar himself had a fondness for rubies. His breastplate was covered in them. When Robert killed him at the trident, they said rubies flew everywhere as if his blood was flying everywhere. So there's just a lot of imagery tying Rhaegar to the dagger and there's still a lot of things that they could reveal about his history during season 8. But I think for the most part, a lot of those Robert's Rebellion flashbacks were just to tell you who Jon Snow was exactly. Oh, this is a person that actually has a claim for the Iron Throne because he was a legitimate son of Rhaegar and Lyanna. You may have seen the news recently about George R. R. Martin clarifying his book releases that are coming up. He did say Fire and Blood, the part one of the Targaryen family history, is supposed to come out later this year. He confirmed Winds of Winter, definitely not this year, so 2019 at the earliest, which makes sense, it's the final season of the TV show. So it'd be a good opportunity to try and sync up that book release. There's a part two to Fire and Blood that's a little further off, but that will probably drop after Winds of Winter. Then obviously Dream of Spring will be so far off that it'll drop at some point during the prequel series, because that's not supposed to premiere till 2020. So if Dream of Spring takes as long as Winds of Winter took to come out, then we'll get it before the end of the prequel series. But, you know, who knows how long it's going to take. It's anybody's guess at this point. It's a really bad idea to try and predict George R. R. Martin book release dates. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight. Hold up. Hold up.